Napui. New Zealand's iwi juggernaut. Numbering over 130,000, they make up a fifth of all Māori. And call Northland home. You are in the heart of Ngāpui. A young lady enjoying her slice of the foreshore and seabed settlement. All the best. It was with Ngāpui that my ancestors, newly arrived in a strange land, first met... You know you thinking like a white man. Because I'm a white man. Prophet. Traded? We've always been forthcoming and sharing our resources. Fought. This was a... Exciting new toy. And intermarried. Can I ever be Tonga Te Whenua? You can, and I think you'll make a good son-in-law, you know that? And it was the Ngāpui chiefs who first signed the Treaty of Waitangi. The meaning of the treaty in Māori is different to the meaning of the treaty in English. That was a colossal blunder. A document which promised so much and delivered so little. Lying, fraud and deception. It's that sort of emotional response on both sides yeah. that makes it hard to talk about it, though, eh? If we weren't colonised, Maori wouldn't be anywhere. They'd still be right back in the Dark Ages. So we're a Ngāpui today. We can't keep, like, blaming the past. You know, we've got to start moving forward. And can I, as a white New Zealander, <laughs> rediscover the same spirit of partnership that the Treaty of Waitangi promised 170 years ago? He's a Kiwi. I'm Tangata Whenua. That's the one. you got it right there, mate. <laughs> Today, my journey starts in Auckland, where most Ngāpui now live and work. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, so this is Kingi Taurua is chief of Te at Waitangi and hosts a show on Radio Wātia. It's up to date, even though it's a Maori one. I want to find out what makes Ngāpui unique as an iwi. What can Ngāpui teach this guy about Ngāpui? They're good in bed. What? Good in bed? <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Kingy works uh, at the radio know. station five days a week, but it will never be home. Yeah. For me, there is no place like home. There is no place that smells like home. And, you know, I go home and smell the pūriri trees, the kauri trees, and all those things. Well, all you, you smell here is fumes from motor cars. But the only reason I'm here is because there is no jobs, so we have to come here. But our hearts and our minds is all back home. Yeah, and then... Kingy was born in Waitangi and raised to be a chief. 200 years ago, our ancestors' worlds first collided. Sitting here in Ponsonby, having a, having a smoothie. <laughs> Today, with the changing face of New Zealand, it's Kingi who's the minority in an alien landscape. Do you feel that you fit in? I'm always looking sideways at these people because I don't know how they feel about me, especially me with my moko. At home, uh, I feel quite comfortable. My name's Kingi. I'm Mike. Inviting a neighbouring couple to join us was a chance to test and maybe bridge the culture gap. <laughs> What's the story behind that particular This is a puhuru. It belongs to the Ngāpui tribe. This side it talks about my mother, this side talks about my father. And um, you see this? You see those marks there? The tribe can see that guy is a speaker for his tribe. So it's the words going in, words coming out. And as a speaker for Ngāpui, Kingi is expected to uphold the meaning and intent of the Treaty of Waitangi. Uh, the articles are still there, and it's very, very clear, very, very clear what the articles say. A document that very few Pākehā have actually read. Because Article 2 talks about land, water, mountains, seas, Māori belongs to Māori, and Māori holds sovereignty over those particular issues. And I guess that's something that subconsciously park here. That's right. Pretty bummed out about it. Yeah. Well, they do. Yeah. They do because they think they don't belong. But what I, what I must say is, if it wasn't for the treaty, you wouldn't be saying that because you wouldn't be here. Mm. It's the treaty that allowed you to come here. Mm. Do you feel, feel bad not being able to say it's your country the same way that Māori can say it's their country? Well, I, I do not feel bad. I mean, I regard this as our country. Well, it may be controversial, but because Maori say to me, this is not your country, you don't belong, yes. I don't believe them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Whether it's a Ponsonby cafe or the local RSA, Kingi, who fought for queen and country in Vietnam, usually finds himself the outsider. I'm on the Auckland Harbour Bridge on Waitangi Day. If you were driving across, would you want to see the New Zealand flag? 
Uh, would you want to see a, a flag representing Māori? Not particularly. Not particularly? Kia ora. Hmm. Because? One country, one nation, one people. I know sometimes what the European mean by being one people. I got to be a European. Not the European be a Māori. It's a, it's, a, it's a big ask. It's a big that ask. That is a big Let's, ask. Well, what <laughs> do you mean right. by, do you want yes. all be one? Do you want two sets of laws? Yes. I'm saying we create our own parliament. Jesus, right, OK, OK. Where we make our own laws. How is it that Kingy wants a separate government? He assures me it's nothing to be frightened of. In a sense, it's always been there. Enshrined in the treaty. There's the colours of our country flapping in the breeze. He's invited me up to his patch to explain and to show off all of the hard work being done prepping for the Waitangi celebrations. And that's the welcome on. I think. There you go. Tenakwe, Mike Tenakwe. Well, my job is to make sure that everything is running okay, the visitors are, are welcomed and all those kind of things. Of course, I'm the rangatira here. Yeah. If it doesn't uh, meet the standard, it actually not reflect on, on anybody else, but it reflect on me and, and the marae. Yeah. Oh. It was here that the treaty was first debated and signed by 39 Napui chiefs. And for Kingi's people, it's a living history. That's the royal ensign of this country, as chosen by our ancestors on the 28th of October, 1835, when Māori, not out of a case of having to, but on their own abolition... But sort of out of a case of having to. No, 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 no. Come, 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 my friend, come, my friend. <laughs> I'm telling this story. <laughs> um, um, not out of a case of having to, yeah. out of their own abolition on the 28th of October, 1835, declared their sovereignty to an international arena, to France, America, America and England. England. Right. Those three countries were the three major powers that were operating throughout the Pacific, and at that time in history, they were extending their colonies or extending their empires. They needed access to a whole bunch of resources that would sustain the colonies that they had established mm. in their islands. They didn't have any place but the biggest island in the South Pacific, which happened to be these islands here. And in 1835, on the 28th of October, to a 21-gun salute, from three warships, one from England, France and America, our people were recognised as a sovereign independent state internationally. That would give rise to what would take place five years later known as the Treaty of Waitangi. The celebration of Waitangi is about celebrating Waitangi. Mm. It's about memorialising the event that took place on the 6th of February. You know, memorialising what was in the hearts of not only our ancestors, but yours too. Mm. On the so 6th so of February, my you know? ancestors, who, who represents them? Oh, well. well. Who your knows? government, I suppose. Yeah, the Queen. The your government. The it's Governor your General. General. Yeah, your government. Because it's we your don't government believe, well. we don't believe that it's my own government, yeah, you that's see. Right. You see, yeah. our government, we believe that your government's supposed to be looking after your own selves. Right. Our government is our, we want to be our own government. We want to govern ourselves. And we still want to believe that, no, that doesn't belong to us. Parliament doesn't belong to us. Some of us won't even go on a roll. Some of us won't even vote. Mike, the 6th of February was about two leadership authorities coming together one being the owner of everything, Māori, and Māori, that, gov that governing authority, choosing out of three potential partners who they would take as a partner. We chose the English. What my matua is saying, and that Māori want to be able to have the right to govern themselves, in fact, we don't even want that right, because as far as we're concerned, we've always well, had have, that right. We've always had that right, yeah. We're All we're trying right. to yeah. do is just to get the other partner to acknowledge that right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, see, there's your problem. Yes, isn't it? that's the problem. They have not honoured the treaty. Nobody has honoured the treaty. The Partnership th under the treaty might mean parallel governments for Kingi and Hone. And that's why we still hold fast the treaty. But the there's many forms the of river. partnership, and I'm hoping to find out what they can be for me and for Napu. I think that we have honoured Te Treaty of Waitangi in that, in as much that you and I are standing right here on Tauranga mm. We're talking, laughing, having fun. <laughs> Yes. Getting on. And, and getting couple on. of getting Kiwi on. blokes. And getting, getting on. Well, I don't know. That, 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 can, we, can we bring that back around here? <laughs> He's a Kiwi. I'm Tangata Whenua. <laughs> Hone's right. We signed a document as two peoples, but is there a hint of smug superiority of us and them in this claim? A claim the lawyers leave me, a fifth generation Kiwi, as a guest in the only land that I can call home. Next. What does the kiwi taste like? Only Māori will know the taste. Napui cuisine. All the blood coming down here on the close. Ah.
Driving past rich farmland, orchards and housing developments, I'm aware that all this once belonged to Napu. Now less than 5% remains in tribal hands. Aside from private owners, the new caretakers are DOC, an organisation I've always seen as guardians of our natural heritage. Right, we're going to go shoot through to uh, Omahuta Forest, have a look around there. But for many Napui, DOC are just another example of the Crown managing what was once their land. Today I'm with Mitter, a Napui blue blood and DOC liaison officer who often finds himself bridging the two worlds. Oh, there's a first indicator of roadkill. That's got to be roadkill there. What are we looking for roadkill for? Bit of bait for the eels. Get out of there, Hawk. Get out of there. That's us. Get out of there. Right. Oh, for the love of God. What is it like? Sassy as. Oh. oh. It's pretty fresh. It's not too bad. Probably got knocked over last night. <laughs> Let's talk about possums and Doc. Who are they? What are they here for? And how much do you love them? They got introduced by the Climatisation Society. And I think it actually took them four, four to five attempts down in the South Island to actually get them going. Really? Yep. And um, they got them going, and here we are now. How long has this been in the family, this bit of land? Probably 24, 30 generations. Really? Mitter's dad is the leader of his hapu, or sub-tribe. He still lives on rich Fano land which has never been sold. Why is there an old rusty freezer here? <laughs> what did it used to be used for? Wild pork, curry. The kiwi? I ate a lot of kiwi myself. But really? Yeah. But you're not allowed to eat the kiwi? Yeah, uh, well, uh, that's Maori law. I can't eat it. Mm -hmm. But I uh, finally said, oh, well, no more. Let it breed. Good man. Good man. Actually, I was the one who put the rahui on the bush. No more shooting pigeon. What does the kiwi taste like, let's be honest? Yeah, uh, only Maori will know the taste. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, you never eaten it. So I'll never... I'll, yeah. What? How can yes, you know? Mate. How come you know? Mm. I've heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I had... Says uh, the guy uh, from Doc. Like my children. My children never ate it. But they watched me eat it. Right. And all the blood coming down here on the clothes. <laughs> and that's yeah. how it was. Do you feel guilty now knowing that they're an endangered species? Uh, I'm not guilty. Uh, that, that was our kai. Back, you go back 40 years. It was still abundant. 30 years was still abundant. So so you're an, uh, what are you, an ahi, ahikara? Ahikaro. Ahikaro. That means it's your job to yeah. to caretake this piece of... Kaitiuki. Yeah. yeah Kaitiuki. And then, and then rangatira one, is... One is... time if you didn't look after the kumar patch, off. That's how they, that's how they were. Yeah. Rugged. Oh, well, that's Ngapui. That's Ngapui. Yeah. Sure. All the slavery fellows were from down where you come from. Oh, so the slaves would get their heads cut off? Oh, not, yeah, well, they brought them back to look after Kumar Patch. Yeah, See? right. So you never done it. Yep. So Cook, yeah. eat. Yeah. That's it. And that's Can cannibals. It well, it's only English gave them that, that name. Sure. Cannibal. It, it was, was cannibal, wasn't it? It, it was a manna thing. So what do you got? Is that, is that the rotten corn? Yeah, that's rotten corn or piddle. Everyone knows it's an important rotten mark corn. of respect to try another culture's delicacies. It smells like a pig's ass. Yeah. <laughs> and eating traditional rotten corn was my chance to impress. Porridge. Don't spit it out. What does it taste like? Tastes like shit. Mmm. Ah. 